evacuations have been ordered. Fuego in Guatemala is really showing off, spewing ashes and giving us impressive pictures, but it's equally as scary. This is a stratovolcano that is 12,300 feet tall. That's 3,763 meters. And it's one of the most active volcanoes in Central America. And it's only 33 miles, that's about 57 or 53 kilometers from Guatemala City with a lot of people. And this guy, has proven in the past that it is dangerous. Only in 2018, when it erupted, it has ended almost 200 people and has still left 234 missing, which probably adds, unfortunately, to the people that are lost. So Guatemala today began evacuating some residents from the slopes of the volcano of fire, how they call fuego, if you translate it after a new eruption has spewed gas and ash high into the sky. Officials said that at least 600 people were moved to shelters from five communities in Chimaltenango, Esquintala and Zacatepeques. But they said, given the activity of Fuego right now, they expect the number of evacuees to rise. Authorities have also closed a highway in the area and they have also suspended classes for 39 schools. So that's a high number. So what is Fuego actually doing to cause all this? So the volcanic activity that it has shown today, it has sent lava and pyroclastic flows up to 4.5 miles up in the air. That's roughly seven kilometers. And ash columns are still rising roughly 6,000 meters above sea level. And because of that, the government has issued an orange alert. And yeah, it's not comfortable for the residents if you see the pictures of these shelters. And But the residents are saying we prefer to leave rather than to mourn the people that we have lost of like in the villages later. The disaster agency coordination team is ready and that's why they have closed a road that basically links this part of the country to the south of the country. So it's a very important road. This tells you how serious they're taking this. And there have been several such mass evacuations in recent years because of Fuego erupting and already this year, in March of this year. And I already mentioned 2018, Rivers of lava have poured down the volcano's slopes and have devastated a village. Fuego began to erupt initially on June 4th, following weeks of increased activity. And explosions have produced ash plumes that were reaching up to 16,000 feet. That's roughly 5,000 meters above sea level. Lava flows have already impacted several nearby areas. And we have seen incandescent emissions, avalanches, continued ashfall has already prompted heightened alerts and close monitoring. And then today the activity has continued into June 5th and then Fuego really produced large pyroclastic flows. And that's why the alert level was raised and the evacuations were triggered. And if you see the pictures, yeah, I fully, fully understand. And Fuego has exhibited multiple, we have to say, explosions on June 4th already following this increased activity that began on May 27th. And according to local agencies, between five and eight explosions were recorded, each accompanied by really loud, loud sounds that lasted between one and 13 minutes. So that must be scary if you live nearby, but also for the main city that is not far away. So aside from the ash, and the gas that was spewed up up to 16 feet in the air. Also incandescent material was ejected up to 500 feet above the crater. That's 150 meters. So you should not be near the crater if that happens.
Then avalanches of lava flow extended approximately 2,000 feet, like 600 meters. They were observed on multiple sides of the volcano, predominantly advancing towards the Seca and Chenitsa ravines of the mountain. And weather conditions in the region that are surrounding this stratovolcano remained clear, so it was there was good visibility. And basically, what we can say is from May 27th till June 3rd, the Fuego volcano has maintained a steady state of eruption with near constant activity reported by the National Institute of Seismology, Volcanology and Meteorology and Hydrology. Wow, what they all have in this institute. And the volcano has produced these regular explosions, approximately three to seven explosions per hour. That is stressful. Has generated gas and ash plumes above the crater. And these gas and ash plumes have already drifted 30 kilometers, like roughly 19 miles towards the Northwest, West and Southwest. So they have been bothered by this guy for quite a while. But during nighttime activity, incandescent material was ejected up to 500 feet above the crater and these rumbling sounds and shock waves that came with this. Then some explosion triggered block avalanches that descended multiple flanks, reaching vegetated areas and local farmers in the areas. So that's why now everything has even increased further and I think it's the right way to do, to call these um, evacuations, because that is a big guy, Fuego. As I said, one of the most active volcanoes, but Fuego is not alone. It sits alongside two other large stratovolcanoes, Akatenango, you've probably heard about that guy, and the older Meseta. Meseta has a collapsed structure that left behind a massive, debris field that stretches nearly 50 kilometers, 31 miles onto the Pacific coastal plain. So Fuego began forming after the collapse of Meseta. So it's a little younger and it ha has continued a volcanic migration southward from Akatenango. And its long history of activity dates back to at least the early 1500s with records showing frequent and often intense eruptions. Fuego's eruption, eruptions have shifted in composition over time, becoming increasingly mafic and now mostly producing basaltic lava. And the nearby communities are at more and more at risk from these events because these events have brought major ash falls lava flows and pyroclastic flows to these communities. Ongoing risks basically all the time. And because of Fuego's frequent eruptions and the proximity to populated areas, Fuego is thankfully closely monitored and really to make that clear, one of the most hazardous volcanoes in the region. So I'm glad that on June 5th, when it was really showing large pyroclastic flows, that the officials began preventive evacuation of the nearby villages. Smart way to do. And since then, we have several pyroclastic flows that came down the slopes. And if you see these videos, um, how you call what's coming out there, the pyroclastic density currents, they are a mixture of gases, ash, and high temperature rock fragments. And these high temperature rock fragments can be so, so dangerous and hazardous if they hit you. And they descend rapidly down the volcano's flanks. And these flows can really end you through burns or asphyxiation and for this reason, it is absolutely advised not to remain in or near the volcano's ravines. And you might think I'm crazy that I even have to say that, but people keep doing that. They have this volcano tourism, they run towards erupting volcanoes and then they take selfies. It is also not ruled out that we see even more pyroclastic flows of weak, moderate, or even strong intensity in the coming hours or days, potentially reaching further into the ravines or 
on other channels of the volcano. So I will be on the pulse for you about this guy. If you liked it, like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe, become a supporting channel member, click the join button or the link in the description. And if you want to support me with coffee, go to my buymeacoffee.com slash silky site, please. And if you leave me a message there, I can answer it with a 30 second video. You can video me back and we can actually see each other. So thanks for your support. I see you very soon. Bye-bye.